Hey folks, Scott here with Steelforge. Thank you so much again for joining me today on this video about masking. One of the first things you're going to want to do when you get your laser cutter, whether it's a Glowforge or another laser, is get yourself some of this stuff. This is a gigantic roll of masking tape. And the reason why we use this stuff is to get a nice clean edge on your projects when cutting it with the laser. I've got a piece of scrap here that's been masked on one side and not masked on the other. You can see actually across this edge here, hopefully it focuses in, you can see across this edge here that there's a scorch mark right along there where the laser has cut it. So in order to get those nice clean lines where we don't have to clean up those scorch marks on our projects, you mask the piece of wood or acrylic before you cut it and that way you avoid having to clean it up or if it's not able to be cleaned up, you don't get those nasty scorch marks on the back. There's two different kinds of masking as well. The one that I showed you earlier, where it's just plain old masking tape, that's what we would do to just, again, get those nice clean lines on a project. And then there's something like this. This is 3M acrylic, or sorry, not acrylic. This is 3M adhesive tape. This is actually extremely expensive stuff, but man, does it ever save you some time and effort and pain. This stuff here acts just like a masking tape, but what it does is it provides a double-sided stickiness and adhesive that you can apply to a backing of something so that you can then apply another layer and stick it together, and it's a really strong bond. So this stuff here is very, very well worth having. Highly recommend, regardless of the cost, this stuff is a time saver. Uh, hugely and um, obviously if you're running a business with your Glowforge or with your laser cutter you're going to want to save as much time as you possibly can or if you're thinking about getting into laser cutting regardless of whether you're running a business this stuff is going to save you a heck of a lot of pain and time and effort uh, instead of gluing things so again highly recommended you get some of this stuff as far as the regular masking tape goes there's a right way to apply it and a wrong way you would apply this to any material that you're going to be cutting in your Glowforge um, in this case I'm talking about wood uh, as you can see, one side's been masked on this piece of scrap. This was left over from a previous project. And this side hasn't been masked. You can actually see along this edge a scorch mark. Uh, pretty much every laser has a, a crumb tray in it or a tray of some kind underneath it. But uh, what you get is that flashback that basically scorches the edge of whatever, whatever material you're using. It's super important, especially when using mirrored acrylic or cutting mirrored acrylic, um, to make sure that you mask both sides. Mirrored acrylic will come with a protective plastic clear coating on one side and probably just a gray, the mirrored gray backing on that side. And so what you're going to want to do is make sure that you mask with the regular masking tape both sides or if you're sticking it to something you would use the 3M adhesive or you can again use glue if you, if you don't have the 3M adhesive. So what I want to do today is I want to show you the results again of masking. I'm going to actually peel this back if I can. This may take a little while. But uh, essentially, you'll see the difference of masking one side and not masking the other. If you're using this side here and it's going to be stuck to something else, then you don't really need to worry about masking it because um, you're just going to be gluing it or sticking it with the 3M adhesive onto whatever other thing you're sticking it to. So I wouldn't worry too much about masking two sides if one side isn't going to be seen for whatever reason, whether it's hanging on the wall or, you know. So as I peel this tape back, you can see that that side is perfectly clean. There's no scorch marks along the edge. It's a nice clean product on all sides, on all edges. But if I turn it around to the non-mask side, you can see those scorch marks right there from the crumb tray where the laser has heated it up and uh, or it's bounced back. I don't know what the technical terminology is, but it's scorched. So again, if you're not going to be seeing the side, not terribly important to mask it unless you're sticking it to something and you want to use the 3M tape. But for nice clean edges when you're seeing the particular side of the project, definitely mask, okay? And I'm going to show you now how to mask things. There are several ways of doing this. I'm going to be doing it the manual, the hard way. There's machines out there that you can buy that will kind of like mask for you. They're, they're cold laminators. And basically it's like a hand crank or an electronic. You push a button and it pushes the wood through. And basically what happens is it's got two rollers, one on the top, one on the bottom. And as you push the material through, the masking tape goes right over top of this and right underneath here. You could actually use like, you know, the 3M tape on the bottom of the project, right? And then your regular masking tape on top and it would laminate both sides. It would basically mask both sides of your project automatically, which, I mean, if you're doing a lot of projects, it saves you a heck of a lot of time. I'll show you how to manually do it. Um, there's a couple of techniques to getting it done right. 
uh, that I've learned, and I'm brand new to this, please. So don't think I'm an expert or anything like that. Um, but uh, take it for what you will, and uh, at least hopefully it'll be helpful to you in terms of getting your projects masked quickly and efficiently and avoiding something like this. Okay, so we're gonna mask this piece of Columbia Forest Products cherry. This is a quarter inch ply, as you can see. And this is a pretty typical piece of wood. Uh, it's already cut actually to the size that would fit inside the Glowforge bed. So I think it's uh, 19 by 12. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mask this with regular masking tape, the one that I showed you um, previously there. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna get the, you wanna turn your, your piece of wood this way and you wanna line up the edges of your tape roll with the piece of wood. These things are 12 inches wide. You can get them in different uh, widths, but I highly recommend because you're gonna be using the majority of the, the products that you're gonna be using uh, for cutting in your Glowforge or laser cutter are probably gonna be cut to this size, like 19 by 12. So you want something that's 12 inches wide so that it's nice and easy to mask. So anyway, you find the edge of the tape, which is always fun to do. Just grab yourself a few inches of the mask like this. And then what you're gonna do is apply the masking tape to the edge the far edge of your piece of wood or your material, whatever it might be. Just make sure you push it down so that it's nice and stuck on the end like that, okay? And again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got nice, that the edge of the tape is right up against the edge of the material that you're gonna be masking, okay? And then what you do is providing that you've got this nice and stuck down, you're just going to rest it up against your leg here, okay? And you're gonna pull and roll the tape out like this as you go along, okay? And essentially the tape, you're just gonna smooth it down. And again, make sure that you've got that, uh, the edge of the tape close to the edge of the material that you're working with to avoid as many bubbles as we possibly can. Don't worry too much about bubbles because we're actually gonna scrape those out in a little bit. But you're gonna wanna at least get it fairly close to the edge with as few bubbles as possible. We don't want any huge bubbles. so. Again, just smooth it as you, as you go along like this. And then once you get to the point where the tape is up against your body and you can no longer pull it closer towards you, what you're gonna do is just switch it sideways like so, okay? And then finish off and just like so. Make sure that you've got it all over there. Now we missed a little bit here. If you're cutting to the edge over here, okay, then you're gonna wanna make sure that the masking tape is right up against the edge. We're not having to worry about that too much. Uh, but if you did need to, you can always go back like this and just sort of adjust a little bit and then lay it down as needed, okay, like so. Again, we want to try and avoid the big bubbles if we can. Uh, this is why one of those cold laminators, laminators will be such a, a fantastic tool to have because if you're doing a lot of this, man oh man, it can get to be a bit of a pain in the you know what. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab ourselves something sharp. In this case, I've got like an X-Acto knife. Be super careful with these. They are extraordinarily sharp. And just using the edge of the material, just cut the tape right off like so, okay? And then there you go. Now what we're gonna do is get all those bubbles out. So we'll move our tape out of the way. And we're gonna use one of these. I just bought this off. This is just a like a crafting materials thing that you buy off Amazon. This one doesn't happen to be a very good quality one because the plastic's already sort of, you know, rubbing off kind of thing, right? So get yourself a pretty decent one of these. I got it in a kit with, it came with scissors and it came with a picking tool of some kind and the X-Acto knife, uh, you know, it was cheap and cheerful. Um, it does the job, but it doesn't do it very well. So anyway, get yourself something like this. It could even be a, like a credit card or two credit cards put together. Um, and then just sort of use this to smooth the, the masking tape out on your material like so. Again, don't worry too much about bubbles because the bubbles aren't gonna matter a whole lot. Um, just make sure that you turn it around and you get this nice and smoothed out. You don't want big air pockets, little creases and things like that. You know, they're not a big deal. Like you can see, you know, there's a few, I don't know if the light will show it, but there's a few little creases and things like that. You don't need to worry about the creases at all. You just don't want any big air bubbles in it, okay? So just go ahead and smooth this out like so, and smooth the other side like that, like so. And there you go. You've got yourself a piece of mask material. Now you can go ahead and mask the other side as well if you want um, with the 3M adhesive tape, if that's what you're gonna be doing is sticking this to something else. Or in the case of a piece of acrylic, you're certainly gonna to wanna to mask the other side as well. I'll show you what I mean by the acrylic. 
Now, this is a piece of plain black acrylic. This has a protective coating on the one side. I don't know if you can see that right there, right? It's got a little plastic coating that covers the one side. And then it's actually masked with a piece of paper already. Now, the, the, the acrylic that you're getting may not be masked on the one side. If it isn't, make sure that if it's not mirrored acrylic, that you remove this plastic film and mask both sides of the acrylic with your regular masking tape like the one we just used for this piece of wood, okay? Because again, acrylic will scorch on, on the side that uh, is, is resting against the crumb tray on the bottom of your laser cutter uh, if you don't mask it. So important to do that, especially with lighter colored acrylics. You're not gonna see it so much with this, but definitely you will see some scorch marks if the lighting is right or wrong as it were. So um, yeah, make sure that you, you, you definitely mask your acrylics, okay? With mirrored acrylic, it becomes even more important because mirrored acrylic has that protective plastic coating on the one side, but it has the, the mirrored gray finish on the back here. Now, it's, when you're, uh, there's a whole different video that we could make about this, but you're going to be placing the mirrored acrylic mirror side down, okay? The shiny side down, and you're gonna be reversing your image so that the laser will engrave on this side and not that side, okay? Very important because if you do it from this side, it will scorch and it'll have these little sort of almost like cracked marks, but mask both sides of your mirrored acrylic as well, okay? You can, there's argument to be said that you don't necessarily need to mask this side because you're just engraving on this side and it's not going to show up. But I don't know. I prefer to mask both. I'll show you what I mean when it uh, when I talk about the scorch marks. Let me see if I can find an example. I've got an example right here that I can show you. You see these scorch marks right here? You can probably see me. Hello. <laughs> um, there's these scorch marks. These sort of they look like they're it's almost cracked. Um, you can see that there. Hopefully, I don't know if you can actually, but anyway, it's against this edge and I even actually cut this upside down, but because I didn't mask this side, those scorch marks appeared on this side, on the mirror side of the acrylic. So again, super important to mask both sides of your mirrored acrylic so that you avoid that particular thing from happening. So I once heard that you could clean up scorch marks like this with baby wipes, um, just simple, plain old baby wipes, you know, this sort of thing. You can get these at the dollar store. I think that's exactly where we got them. I went ahead and tried it and it didn't come off at all. Like you can see me rubbing this stuff off and it's still there. So again, argument to be had for the benefits of pre-masking your product or pre-masking your materials before you cut them in your laser cutter so that you don't have to deal with that. You get the nice clean edges and no scorch marks. Um, I hope this was helpful in some way. Thank you so much for joining me again on this video. Would really appreciate it if you hit the like button. Comment down below. Tell me what you thought of the video, if it helped you at all. Um, you know, make sure that you hit the subscribe button too because we'd love the support. We love the support already for you coming to watch. Um, hit the notification bell too because we do drop videos regularly. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to save some cash on your own Glowforge, if you're thinking of buying one, there's a referral link down below. Be sure to use that because you can save yourself uh, $250 US off a of Plus or $500 US off a of Pro. So, and we appreciate you using that referral code because we get a little bit of a kickback too. So, thanks again for supporting us. Thanks for tuning in, watching, subscribing, liking, commenting, all that good stuff. We'll catch you on the flip side. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.